Unlike most oil companies, Exxon gives you a choice. You can pay with our credit card or pay with their card and get an instant application for one of ours. Or pay cash and save. At participating Exxon stations, the choice is yours. Exxon, quality you can count on. It's your Coors now Atlanta and your Coors now Miami and your Coors now in Tampa. The best of the Rockies is here. The clean of the Rockies, the fresh of the Rockies as only Coors can brew it. Coors and Coors Light. Go fresh, clean Jacksonville. Taste what we mean in Birmingham. Rocky Mountain Gold, you got it. The best of the Rockies is yours. 17 hours. That's how long it took us to paint this house with a brush. Then we painted it in just six and a half hours with a Wagner power painter. This wicker chair took over an hour, but less than five minutes with a Wagner power painter. A shutter that took 20 minutes, a power painter finished in only three. It's a tool so versatile, it has a flexible spray tip and a way to draw paint right from a can. A Wagner power painter. It's the right tool for painting. The Traumas of Child Abuse, Tuesday on MERV. The World Tonight. Now here's Jim Brosmer. Good evening, everybody. 29 Haitians who tried for freedom in the United States are in custody tonight at the Chrome Avenue Detention Center. 21 men, 5 ch women, and 3 children say they came on a rickety sailboat lashed together with rope. Lawmen doubt that the craft made it here all the way from Haiti, and passengers didn't look as though they'd spent two weeks in an open boat. The craft was stopped about 100 yards off North Beach in Hollywood, and everybody was rounded up. Having a Coast Guard cutter station close to Haiti has cut down on the number of these incidents. Nick Bogut reports on that. Coast Guard ships began patrolling the Windward Passage northwest of Haiti about a year and a half ago. Within days, they'd intercepted their first refugee-laden boat, the Exord. Those aboard were returned to Haiti, and there was a rush of publicity about the interdiction plan. But in the year and a half that that plan has been in effect, there have been only eight such interceptions reported, and only 216 Haitians have been turned back by Coast Guard cutters patrolling refugee routes. Immigration officials argue that those are not the important numbers. We went from 1980, 15,000 people, to 1981, a little over 8,000, to 1982, a little over 100. And so I think that you can say it's been an unqualified success in terms of stopping smuggling. It seems that the main effect of all of this enforcement of all the immigration laws is a deterrence. But some Haitian activists here say that deterrence has been overrated. They heard about the Coast Guards, all right? But uh, you must understand the determination of the people. And uh, if there were boats available in Haiti right now, you will have more and more trying to escape. There is general agreement that the Coast Guard has stopped scenes like this. Huge boats bringing in large numbers of refugees direct from Haiti. Two years ago, one boat might bring in 130 refugees. Now Jean Just says that many Haitians arrive here each month, while the government claims that's a year's total. But those trying to sneak into this country now are more likely to do what these men did last month, try to slip in on board a commercial ship a few at a time often through a third country like the Bahamas or Puerto Rico. The interdiction effort has almost certainly made it more expensive to come to our shores illegally. Two years ago, Jean Just estimates, passage from Haiti would have run $50 to $100. Now it can cost from $2,500 to $3,000 per head. Nick Bogert for The World Tonight. From Fort Lauderdale tonight, Jim Dyer reports on promises to people who invested in precious metals. With hundreds of investors charging ripoff, Florida's attorney general has ordered the International Gold Bullion Exchange in Fort Lauderdale to change their gold sales practices or face legal action. The firm's president says everything is legal, but his three-year-old company has suffered from growing pains. Everybody's saying they can't deliver, they can't deliver, they can't deliver. But as time goes on, they're going to see us deliver, 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 deliver. Okay, so finally, a minus has to turn into a plus. Because now they'll say, hey, they ran into a traffic jam, they're a big corporation, they grew too fast. The brokers took too many orders, wrote up the orders, put them to the shipping department. The shipping par department couldn't get them out on time. So we ran into that traffic jam, a log jam, call it what you will. Point is, 
when we come out of this, we're going to prove to the world and everybody that everybody got their medals. And if they couldn't wait for their medals, I'll give them a refund. Argus Ferguson of Tennessee has filed a federal lawsuit to recover $80,000 that he invested in a silver deal last February. But Alderdice says Ferguson and hundreds of other unhappy investors will get their money or their medal by Wednesday of next week. Jim? Well, it was two and a half months late, but a beautiful launch of the new space shuttle nonetheless. Challenger carries four astronauts tonight, and they chatted with the president a little bit earlier. In a few minutes, they'll launch a new satellite into orbit. It'll be the world's biggest orbiting communications center. Despite the spectacular launch, 20 years of space flight is apparently pretty convenes tomorrow to take up issues that will affect us all. Lawmakers will be asked to raise the drinking age from 19 to 21. And the governor, who wants to spend about a billion dollars in the next two years to upgrade schools, is asking for $250 million in new property taxes to pay for it. Some legislators say there are other places to look. It's in conflict with what we did last year in reducing property taxes. In addition to, it, it diminishes the commitment to increase state support of public education. Corporate income tax is a state tax source. It would maintain our commitment for the state to pay the bill for education. The governor says getting that money for education is the legislature's priority this session. The World Tonight continues with some important news in cancer research. In my hometown, there's this bar called the Firefly. It's where all the real men hang out. My sister and I call up and pick a name. Hi, Mike. How you doing, baby? Any way we could get together? Sure is. I got a white Chevrolet and I'll be sitting on the hood. Well, Mike, if you're still waiting. Calvin Klein jeans. Hang in. My sister and I get better every day. America, you don't know it yet, but you're going to Europe this summer on Pan Am. You're going because we cut our fares. They're lower than last year. You're going because now there's no excuse not to. It may be London. Or Paris. Or Rome. But you're going to Europe this summer on Pan Am. Because you can't beat the experience. We're the rules. America, I guess we're going. You can't beat the When the city moved to Boca Raton, I moved to the city. When the city moved to Palm Beach... We moved to the city. All the smart money is moving to the city. City Federal. City spans the country with every financial service. Money market accounts, loans, tax shelters, pension fund management, term insurance, discount brokerage services, and more. These days, you need more than a bank. You need a city. City Federal Savings. Gentlemen, I move that we move to the city. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to happen any moment. This report is brought to you by Tire Kingdom, Florida's largest tire dealer. Yes, we can see him now climbing that mountain of independent and major brand tires. He's, he's near the top, and here it is, the crown for being number one. Ladies and gentlemen, the king of tires. Only Tire Kingdom sells quality tires for less, less than anybody. There's a Tire Kingdom near you throughout Palm Beach, Martin, and Broward County. The medical world is one step closer to a cure for cancer tonight. That's the word from North Carolina's Duke University. Researchers have isolated a virus that causes a rare form of human cancer, and that's the first time anyone has been able to confirm a discovery made some Viruses, five years ago. Uh, cause cancer in rats and cows and chickens and all other animals, but if no one's ever demonstrated that there was a virus connected with human cancer. Never until now. Dr. Schultz is hopeful this discovery will lead to the finding of a cure for T-cell leukemia. The Broward Community College kicked off Women's Week this evening with a workshop on divorce. What was once a topic only discussed in an attorney's office or with a close friend had nearly a hundred women and some men gathered to hear from a divorce expert, Judge Bobby Gunther. Judge Gunther took the positive approach in looking at tonight's turnout. To me, it indicates that people are trying to come to grips with the trauma of getting a divorce or being divorced, and I think that they're looking for answers to try and go ahead with their life. I hope that when someone comes here, they feel a little bit better and have a little bit of hope because a divorce is a very traumatic thing. I keep using the word divorce, which is not accurate. It's called the dissolution of marriage now, but everyone knows it by divorce. But whatever it's called, Judge Gunther admits it remains a painful experience. Those who attended tonight were advised to try and work out a settlement with their spouse before even seeing an attorney. 
Well, the ongoing feud between Fort Lauderdale's police chief and city manager Connie Hoffman is apparently coming to an end. Channel 4 learned tonight that Chief Leo Callahan is expected to submit his retirement papers to the city tomorrow, effective the 30th of this month. A source close to Chief Callahan said tonight that the veteran police officer would be spending a good deal of time working with the International Association of Chiefs of Police, to which he was recently elected president. Chief Callahan stepped out of police work briefly last fall when he ran unsuccessfully as a Republican candidate for lieutenant governor. And since that time, had been at odds with the city manager over retirement arrangements. Chief Callahan spent 27 years with the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, nearly 10 of them as chief. Jim? A former University of Florida English professor was apparently stabbed to death, according to an autopsy released today. 50-year-old Council Bly's body was found stuffed into an abandoned refrigerator in Gainesville last Thursday. His empty car was also located recently in Louisiana. Bly was fired from his job at the university after three male students claimed that he, was, he had made sexual advances toward, the, uh, toward him. He uh, fought the dismissal in court, but he lost the battle. An unsolved murder in Coconut Grove is the subject of this week's Crime Stoppers Crime of the Week. Here's Larry Hendricks. His name is John Doe. That's the term police use when they have no identity on the victim of a murder. But this case is even more baffling. There's no motive and there's no suspects. It all began in the early morning hours of February 8th of this year. The lone drifter came across the daycare center at Coconut Grove Baptist Church. A window in this store had been missing for several weeks and this building had a reputation for being a place to get out of the elements. Sometime between midnight and 3 a.m., apparently while John Doe lay sleeping, he was viciously attacked and repeatedly beaten in the head with a piece of baseball bat-sized pipe. The following morning, his battered body was discovered by the church pastor and his wife. After long hours of going over facial photos, City of Miami police lab technicians were able to come up with this composite. John Doe is described as between 17 and 24 years of age, 5 feet 11 inches tall and 175 pounds. He had brown wavy hair and green eyes. On the day he was murdered, he wore a gold v-neck velour pullover, beige pants and sandal type shoes. From a witness report, the man may have been seen in the area of the church earlier in the evening about 7 p.m. An auto accident had occurred in the grove and traffic was rerouted past the daycare facility. Police are looking for anyone who may have seen or heard something that can bring this mysterious homicide to a close. Here's what you can do to help. If you have information on this or any other crime, you can call Crime Stoppers at 326-TIPS in Dade County, 765-TIPS in Broward. Your information will remain confidential, and you could earn up to a $1,000 reward. We'll have a look back at the youth fair. That's coming up right after we check with Bob Weaver about a surprise out west. Years ago, luxury cars began a tradition that persists to this day. What does this do? Why, nothing. You see, it's a symbol. Thus was born the luxury oh. car's preoccupation with prestige, except for the BMW 733i. We place engineering before ornamentation. Our status symbol is under the hood, not on it. Contact your BMW dealer for a test drive of the new BMW 733i. At the dawn of history, man ran, primarily for his health. Just be finny! But he could revive himself at the spring we now call Perrier. C'est un miracle. Today, man has discovered the joy of running. And the sparkling reward of naturally salt-free Perrier. Earth's first soft drink. And Monet created bracelets, textured bangles, bold cuffs, woven wristlets, so you could select your look. And Monet created necklaces, dramatic collars, hammered links, delicate chains, so you could define your look. And Monet created earrings, polished buttons, sculptured clips, dazzling drops, so you could express your look from the classic to the unexpected. Monet creates the jewelry, and you create the look. When things start to fall apart and the day gives you a slap in the face, even the simplest things seem to go wrong. You get frustrated, tense, all wound up. Turn to WLYF and unwind with our easy, relaxing sound. Listen 
and enjoy life's little pleasures. WLYF, a beautiful place to be at FM 101. She reigned as the queen of Hollywood's golden age. She was the glamour girl of silent films. Gloria Swanson died in her sleep this morning. She was 84. Perhaps best known for her role as a fading movie star in Sunset Boulevard, friends, she said, was a star that never faded. Although her life was full of controversy, including six marriages, she says she never got caught up in being a celebrity. I'm remembered, I want to be remembered as I really was and by the people who knew me well, not who imagined I was what they saw up there or the image they wanted to give me. And God knows I haven't been that good to have received all the blessings I have. Every morning and every night I say thank you, God, but I wish you'd somehow explain to me why. Gloria Swanson, dead at the age of 84. A uh, nice weekend uh, for the most part in South Florida. I guess a few showers, uh, what, Saturday night, but... Uh, clear sailing the rest yeah, of the time. Yeah, it turned out just right because uh, by sunrise it was all gone and uh, Sunday turned out to be a beautiful day and right now the weather pattern is changing a little bit. I think we're going to have many more days of nice weather. Let's take a look at the current information and then we'll look at the entire weather picture. 72 in Miami, 72 Miami Beach, 73 Fort Lauderdale and 73 at West Palm. The barometer 3007 rising, humidity 82 percent. The winds out of the east at 12 and the temperature of the water 74 degrees. All right, here now is a quick look at our radar picture. Now, as we look at that, uh, let me just tell you, there's very little around at this time. There are a few showers right offshore. You can see them there, and that's about it. Over the next couple of days, the most you will have is a few widely scattered showers around. On the satellite uh, picture, the old front now is well offshore. There's a little bit of it left over the New England area. That's about it. But as you see in the west, there's a good deal of weather all through that area. Here's uh, some uh, uh, replica here, if you can see, of what uh, heavy snow all through that area. This section right here continues to move towards the east. What is different, and I'll show you as we get to the national map, is the fact that this storm system that is well to the south is pumping moisture up to the north. They're having a good deal of heavy snow all through this area. If you'd like to see what it looked like today, here it is. They had winds of about 40 or 45 miles per hour, snow and blowing snow, visibility down to zero around uh, Kansas. They had over uh, 12 inches of snow, sections of New Mexico, 14 inches of snow. The winds did quite a bit of damage all through that area. And uh, even though they're trying to clean up now, some sections are still having snow. But by tomorrow, there's a chance of improvement because all of the snow will change over to rainfall through the center sections as temperatures start to climb. But this area now, as we place it for tomorrow, notice the difference here. Usually, these storms have been moving along the south and coming across Florida. The upper air pattern now has changed. The track of the storm has changed. So some of these storms now that usually would have come across Florida are taking a path more to the north, and so it looks like at least for two or three days we should have nice weather without a major storm moving through. 40s through the north. The rainfall will come to Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, into the south. Over the eastern areas, about one more day of sunshine. 60 at New York tomorrow, 70 at Asheville, and 75 at Atlanta. But by time Wednesday rolls around, all that will become increasing cloudiness and some scattered showers. And then for South Florida, we'll have partly sunny skies for the next couple of days down through the Caribbean. It was generally sunny. Temperatures were in the 80s most everywhere today. And on this date in history, in 1978, a famous American poet quit writing poetry. He said, rhyme doesn't pay. Okay, let's take a look at our forecast now. That's a thumb sideways. And partly sunny and warmer. The low overnight, 65 to 70. See, what's one of the uh, areas that we are getting into now with the change of the upper air pattern, temperatures are climbing. The high tomorrow will be about 82 degrees. The sea's two to four feet, and the waters near shore will have a moderate chop. And that's the weather. Thank you, Bob. The 1983 Youth Fair appears to have been a tremendous success tonight. All the totals are not in yet, but if attendance is any indication, Mark Trank says the fair was a winner. The youth fair began to pack up this morning after 18 days of neon-lit rides, thousands of exhibits, and hundreds of free shows. 
A record-setting 760,916 visitors passed through the turnstiles at the fairgrounds, a figure slightly under the projected attendance mark of 800,000. This year's fair had an operating budget of $2.5 million, and officials hope it will realize about a half million in profit, despite being a tax-exempt nonprofit organization. It will live up to the expectation. Of course, we haven't uh, got all the revenue in and tallied up yet. Uh, operational budget, it'll cost us about $2.5 million to operate this last year's fair. We hope that the revenue on the income side will be substantially greater than that. Well, we only operate the annual fair, and when the fair is concluded, we turn all of our facilities over to Metropolitan Dade County Parks Department. They administer it, they run it. But before that can happen, a massive cleanup and breakdown operation must first take place. Fair employees were busy doing just that, although a few stalwarts got some much needed rest. For the traveling shows like the popular Elephant Express, it means a brief rest before the next performance. In this case, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Cleanup should take about a week here, with the park returning to Dade County on April 15th. But already fair officials are looking ahead. They're planning on spending more than $8 million for new buildings here in the next 10 years, reflecting a confidence that the Dade County Youth Fair will continue to be a success for many years to come. Mark Trank, Channel 4 News at the Dade County Youth Fair. Hank Goldberg's next with, the next with a recap of the basketball action tonight, and then we'll have some good news for the kids in Coral Gables. Unlike most oil companies, Exxon gives you a choice. You can pay with our credit card, or pay with their card and get an instant application for one of ours. Pay cash and save. At participating Exxon stations, the choice is yours. Exxon, quality you can count on. This is unbelievable. Hi, I'm the guy who usually does the Burdine's white sale commercials, right? Not anymore because they're not having any more white sales. Not one. Did you ever hear anything so crazy? Crazy like a fox, I think, because starting right now, Burdine's has the highest quality with the lowest prices every day on sheets, towels, all the same things you used to buy at white sales. And you still get the same new styles and fine service you expect from Burdine's. You'll never have to wait for a white sale again. Burdine's prices beat sale prices every day. Does this mean I'm out of the business? When you stay at a big, fancy hotel, you pay for a lot more than your room. You don't need a fancy hotel to get a big, comfortable room. You can get one at Howard Johnson's, along with a big bathroom, an oversized bed, and even some special care in our executive section, all at a sensible price. At Howard Johnson's, we don't nice. care about the fanfare. We care about the things that count most. A lot of action tonight, a good game, and uh, at the end we saw those two guys standing on the rim. I didn't know the rim was going to hold two, two big guys. <laughs> if, you went, <laughs> if you went to the movies tonight, or if you were busy preparing your first news show after a vacation, nasty break. North Carolina State's cardiac kids capped a Cinderella season by coming off the deck and defeating Houston's five Slamma Jamma boys for the NCAA basketball championship. North Carolina State surprised everyone by coming out not in a slowdown game, but by taking it right to the top-ranked Cougars. They raced away to a 6-0 lead behind center Thurl Bailey. North Carolina State's top gunner Derek Wittenberg was quiet while Bailey carried the load and got the pack off to a 10-point lead. But Bailey could not keep the cap on Houston's Akeem Olajuwon. He came alive and got Houston rolling. Forget about Sampson and Ewing. Akeem is better than both. Still, NC State led by eight points at halftime, but Houston exploded like a Texas tornado after intermission. They were up by eight points, but NC State came back to tie it. Then, with the clock running down, NC State pulled off the most dramatic NCAA victory I've ever seen. They've got to drive to the basket. It's down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg, oh, it's a long way. That stuff by Lorenzo Charles gave NC State a 54-52 victory and the title. Tonight, we saw the excitement that can be generated by college basketball. The atmosphere is unique in sports. Not many people remember we had a taste of that here in the 60s when Rick Barry starred for a University of Miami team that was competitive on a national level. Once again recently, there's been talk of reviving basketball at the UM, despite still not having an on-campus place to play 
Barry is among those who feel the sport can be successful here. If the program is run properly, uh, this is a great place to recruit people to come to. I know it was easy to sway me coming down, even without a, a nice facility. Although the one thing I did miss was not having that, not having that school spirit that you see at so many other universities. Mm -hmm. If they had that, it, it would be great for the university as a whole, for great, for great experience for all the student, students. And I think it would, uh, it would be able, they would be able to compete on a national level. We did, mm -hmm. and we didn't have a, a place right on campus or a really good facility to play. And I really think that the recruiting aspect of it would be a very easy one to get people to come down. And uh, if they have the right people down here, it can be a major, uh, a major competitor in uh, college basketball, without question, within three to five years. Nice lid, Rick. Here's some big news for the University of Miami football program. Their 1983 finale against Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl has been switched to Saturday night, September 24th. It will be televised nationally by CBS. Opening day is a term that only applies to baseball. Adults and kids alike spend most of the winter thinking up excuses so they can play hooky from work or school to be on hand for the ceremonial first ball, except in Cincinnati, where for the first time in 11 years, Riverfront Stadium was not sold out. But for you frustrated opening dayites, Mr. Director, play ball. 10,000 empty seats in Cincy today, where baseball's worst team of 1982, the Reds, hosted one of last year's best, Atlanta. The Braves won 13 straight to start the 82 campaign, and they got off to a 3-0 lead this afternoon after Chris Chambliss launched a two-run space shuttle off Mario Soto. Cincinnati has a new left fielder this season in rookie Gary Reedus, who makes a spectacular catch to rob Glenn Hubbard. Hello, Wall. Reedus has to learn the wall is harder than his body. I think he did. That hurt him, but seemed to revitalize the Reds. Gil Aranoster parked a Phil Necro pitch in the seats with Johnny Bench on board in the second inning. Atlanta got one of those back in the sixth, but Reedus, who had a great premiere, shows he can hit as well as field with this homer off Necro. Cincinnati ties it up in the sixth inning on Bench's single, scoring Davey Concepcion from second. Then in the bottom of the eighth, Concepcion gets the big hit with two out. A single to right center, plating Eddie Miller with the deciding run, and the Reds go on to win it 5-4. to four. In Baltimore, a sellout crowd of 52,000 turned out for the Orioles' debut under new manager Joe Altabelli. Kansas City came out of the box with a run in the first when Dan Ford dropped Amos Otis' fly ball. Tied 1-1 in the third, George Brett delivered a two-run homer off Dennis Martinez. Willie Aikens and Jerry Martin homered later on, and the Royals spoiled the day for Baltimore with a 7-2 victory. And tonight, Texas beat Chicago 5-3, Cleveland and Oakland just getting started. Lanny Watkins birdied five of his last nine holes today to run away with the Greater Greensboro Open Golf Tournament by five shots. Very exciting night. Baskets, you just can't beat it. Thank you, Hank. We'll close tonight with some good news about a treehouse in Coral Gables. Michael Landsberg was at City Hall tonight with his mom. He heard the city continue permission for him and his brother to continue playing in their treehouse, the only legal one in that city. At least from year to year, you know, we'll keep maintaining it and they'll keep playing in it. And it'll be a continuous joy for them. And we'll abide by whatever the city says. The kids had to apply for a permit last year when an anonymous complaint came in about the treehouse. They had it inspected and proven safe. And they'll have to do it again next year to keep the treehouse in the city of Coral Gables. Next news on Night Watch after the CBS Late Movie. We thank you for watching. Have a good night. Nature's wonderful. It's wonderful because it's perfect. 100% natural. Just like you, just like me, and just like this shampoo and conditioner, Naturals. The first 100% natural shampoo and conditioner. No artificial anything. So we get all the shine, body, and manageability you and I ever wanted. Naturally.
Naturals from Nature's Organics Plus. It's 100% natural, 100% you and me. You're looking good, good looking. Dressed for the sun, the fun, ready for the swimming and sporting in swimwear by Janssen from Swim and Sport Shops. Swim and Sport has the biggest selection of Janssen and Janssen Junior fashions for the sun, the fun, the swimming and sporting. Get the good looks you deserve. Go for it at Swim and Sport. Fits your body like the water, your lifestyle like the sun at Swim and Sport Shops. 